Paradoxical here, and today we are going to go over a video on how to use Python, the programming language. This will be my first video on a brand new series, going to be either titled Python for Beginners or Tutorial to Python, one of those two I'll come up with later. Anyways, what this series is going to be about is just simply how to use Python, what you can do with it, and well, simply just Python for beginners. Anyways, what is Python? Python is a high level programming language often used by beginners because of its simple syntax and its easy to learn uh, skills, I guess, if that makes sense. Anyways, Python is very easy to use. Uh, don't let high level discourage you. Despite it being high level, it is honestly very simple to use. Anyways, let's get into the actual tutorial. First thing you want to do is you want to open up your browser and go to python.org and then downloads. Download the latest version for your OS. I've already downloaded it right here. And after that, you want to download a code editor. I like to use VS Code or Visual Studio's code. Some people like to use Atom. These are both very good um, code editors. Or if you have a text editor that you're comfortable with, you can go ahead and use that as well, as long as you can run code in it. Anyways, I've already done all that. I have VS Code already installed, which is what we're going to be using in today's video. Um, you can also use the uh, code editor that comes with Python. So anyways, to install it, you're going to see something that looks like this. Mine is different because I already have Python installed, but for you, you'll see something like install now, or I think another thing I can't remember, but you'll, and after you install it, you'll see something that says add to path. Make sure you check that and just make sure everything is set up correctly. I've already done that, so I'm not going to install it on video. But after you install it, you want to go ahead and open VS Code. Now, I already have a file made because I tried to make this video last night, but I was too tired, so I ended up uh, scrapping it. But basically what we're going to do is, to make a brand new file, we're going to go here, click on this. And we're going to just name our file. So I'm going to name it main.py. py as in pi, which is the extension or file extension for Python files. Go ahead and create that file, and we have an empty Python file. Now, we're going to go over some simple functions in Python and just basically the syntax and what you can do with it. And in later on videos, we're going to go over like classes and conditionals, which are if and else statements. If you've programmed other languages, you should recognize those. And just variables and all kinds of stuff. We're actually going to go over variables in this video, but yeah, that's pretty much what we're going to be going over the entire series. And eventually how to actually make programs and whatnot. Anyways... We're going to go ahead and just start with the print function. You may be familiar with the term print hello world. Basically what this does is when you run it, it just says hello world in your terminal or output if you use that. Now, this is something that like a lot of people know and I think it's really neat. But basically, you can print anything you want if it's inside two quotations or a string. Now, if now there are other ways you can do this. If you want uh, to use variables to print, you can just do x equals. This is how we start a variable. And we can put two strings. So I'm going to put hello world. And then... We have x is set to hello world, and we're going to put x, just print x, x being in the parentheses with no string attachments. We're going to run it. As you can see, we get the exact same thing. If I wanted to change this to something else, print again, wait. there we go, and we have this now. So basically, whatever you type in this string, um, it'll set that 
to the x variable and it will take and you'll put x in here and it'll take from that variable which is this is the data that is stored in that variable you can also do this with numbers so if you want to do x equals to 17 run program it'll print out 17 which of course this is just the same thing as print the integer is 17 <coughs> excuse me and yeah that's Honestly, very simple. This is what we're going to be going over in the video. Now, what we can do is, with the print function, print usually just is not really always used in um, programming, but it basically allows you to look in your terminal and confirm everything is working correctly because the print will be the last thing that is running if the rest of your code is uh, running properly the print function will um, basically print out whatever is in these two parentheses so if I have a lot of code up here and I want to make sure it's working I just want to type something like success and uh, if we pretend there's like a bunch of lines of code up here that I want to check is correct I'll put print after that and if it said uh, and if it prints out success that basically tells me there is nothing wrong with the code yet, and I'm free to move on and go forward with whatever I'm programming. Anyways, another thing you can do with print functions is you can do like simple math. So if I want to take 17 again and then add 3, which would be 20, I can do that, and then that prints out 20. You can also do division or multiplication or subtraction. Do division just to for an example and I get five six and then on you can also do this with variables so if I want to put Z and then Z equals 13 plus 7 print Z I'll still get 20 because Z equals 13 plus 7 which would be 20 and I'll print Z so Z would be 20 and then I'll get 20 in the output Another thing you can do is you can have multiple variables working together. So I can put x equals 10 and I could put y equals 40. So add these two together and it'll be 50. Now let's say I don't make z anything and I just have a print z without any variable. It'll give me a name error, name z is not defined, basically meaning that z does not currently exist. Basically, if you ever get this error, what you have to do is you just have to define Z. So, to make X and Y equal to Z, I'm just going to make Z equal to X plus Y, meaning Z is now equal to 50 because I have Z equal to X plus Y, X being 10 and Y equals 40, and then printing Z to get 50. The more complex thing to do is not only you can do variables set to number, but you can do um, variables set to strings, which is what I did earlier. I'm going to put my name down in my variable of my name. Now I have a variable that's stored with the string value of my name, Tamar. And I'm going to also put my age in. I am 17 years old, so I'm going to put age equals to uh, 17. I was thinking about doing this and putting 17 in that, but you can just leave it at 17 for the integer value. Either way works fine. But anyways, I have my name and my age stored. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print and then I'm going to print this. Hello, my name is... And if we just leave it like that, it's just going to put hello my name is. But if we put a comma and then put a squiggly bracket, or a curly bracket, sorry, and then put my name, should work. And it'll just give us the squiggly brackets of that. Now, if you want the squiggly brackets not showing up in the output, all you have to do is just do that take off a squiggly of brackets and you have hello my name is Tamar. Now if you want to add more you can just put a comma next to my name and then close those 
So you have two strings so far, and then I'm gonna put age, and then a third set of strings, and we're gonna put lyrics old. So what this should say is, hello, my name is Tamar, which is stored in my name. I am age, which is 17, which is stored in age, and then years old. And if I run that, it'll say, hello, my name is Tamar, I am 17 years old. Now there is a much better way to write this code and we're going to show, I'm going to show you how to do that. Now there are two things called F strings and R strings and I'm going to go over them in this video today. An F string allows you to put squiggly brackets inside a single string. So we're going to go ahead and put an F string in. Uh, be careful not to use the capital letter F. It will show up as it works but I'm pretty sure it just throws you an error, so make sure it's lowercase just for simplicity. And just to be 100% sure that your program is going to work. But anyways, I'm going to make an F string. It's just going to be one single string, and my name is. And I'm going to put the two curly brackets that we talked about before, and I'm going to put my name. Now you'll notice that the curly brackets in my name are not the same color as the rest of the string. So, whenever I run the code, it'll still say my name is Tamar, rather than um, the curly brackets for my name. This is what the F string does. If I take this out of here, and I run it, it'll just say my name is my name. But, putting the F string in the code, it'll put my name is Tamar. Now... Keep in mind, doing this, you can still type in your string and stuff will come after it. So, I'm going to put I am, and I'm going to do another set of curly brackets. But instead of putting my name value in it, I'm going to put the age value in it. And after that, I'm just going to put years old with a dot at the end. And as you can see, it shows up as my name is Tamar. I am 17 years old. Pulling 17 from the age value right here, which is 17, and then pulling Tamar from the name, my name value, which is my string with inside name. Now, another thing with uh, strings is an R string. An R string or a raw string, I'm pretty sure is what it's called, is it just gets the raw like data, like where it comes from. So if I put R right there, it'll just say, my name is my name, I am age. And it'll just um, basically put in where, like it'll just put in the variable. Now, this isn't real, R strings aren't really used for this. R strings are more used for things with JSON files or just, Anything that involves reading another file inside your program. This can be for passwords or usernames, if you have a database you're running with it, or like I said, a JSON file. Um, R strings are very useful for that, and we will eventually go over JSON files and how to read them, or just regular old text files. But this is pretty much it for our video today. Uh, it's supposed to be very short. It's just a simple introduction to Python and like variables and whatnot. I very, I very so hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is one of my first coding videos on this channel. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. If there's anything you want to suggest, be sure to leave them in the comments section. I look at those daily and I would love to see your feedback. Other than that, be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. And you guys have an awesome day. Goodbye.